Hey, this is Alexi Lawless. There is nobody in U.S. soccer that is more important than the Cooligans. Yeah, baby, we're back! Oh my God! All right, so the co- the convention is uh, it been, has been wild, has been incredibly intense, and there's just so many people walking by that know who we are. We know who they are. Yeah, that's right. So dope. Yeah, Kyle Martino was just sitting here, <laughs> but now we've we've got some real people. Exactly, up here. not these fake Hollywood people. It's just a warm up. Yeah. <laughs> so look, right now we are sitting with Edgewater Castle, and if you don't know, you've Ed- seen us wear the hats on the show. If you watch right. our YouTube, and if you haven't, uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about a, a team in in Chicago, uh, an a- an amateur team that is is not only just a, any other soccer team. It is a team comprised of several refugees right so what so when we first heard this we, we met or it's immigrants yeah it's a, it's a combo platter yeah so, yeah yeah you know so, not everyone not everyone on the team that is from another country would describe themselves as a refugee okay a lot of the guys on the team were born in chicago right some people did come from uh more okay. like some from poland yeah, yeah, yeah some more crisis situations but sure. um yeah i mean we basically try to be a team that is uh, accessible to everybody, regardless of sort of origin or financial situation. So, and the and per- that's the voice of Andrew, by the way. Yeah, exactly. This is Andrew speaking. And so, so Andrew, let's start with you. What? So, explain what Edgewater Castle is, and 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 your involvement with the with the team. Okay. Um, so, Edgewater Castle is a not-for-profit amateur into semi-professional soccer club that is designed to provide all communities of North Chicago with a high quality, highly organized and uniquely accessible soccer club experience. Uh, Don't know if any of this is getting through, but either way, okay, great, great. Um, (laughs) But yeah, so basically we exist to provide um, the communities of North Chicago that don't have uh, as readily accessible um, avenues into the semi-professional soccer world. We try to, to be a platform that is uh, more accessible to, to those communities. Um, so what as is North, North Chicago, for those of us who don't live in Chicago, yeah. what, is, what is that like and why was that important for you to be in the neighborhood? Like what signifies North Chicago? Absolutely. Well, uh, that's, Cub, that's White Sox territory. It's not. It's actually it's Cubs, Cubs, territory. Cubs, Cubs territory. Yeah, we're in Cubs okay. territory. So we're, we're about as far north in the city as you can get before you leave the city. We're okay. like Winterfell yeah, up yeah. there. Yeah. Um, so Don't say that because now I thought Winterfell's a neighborhood here. <laughs> no, no, no. I remember so Game of Thrones. Just Winterfell now. Castle yeah. FC. <laughs> um, they got a wall of ice but you, <laughs> Chicago's currently as cold as Winterfell. Yeah, yeah legit. Point. Legit. Uh, it's a decent analogy. But basically, we're, we're a, a community that's very far north in the city, right on the lake, um, right off the red line. So it's very accessible to other parts of town. But um, something that's really important about how this team was able to start succeeding there is the fact that they're... Uh, are, it's just an incredibly diverse area. Um, yeah. You know, I think there's like 78 languages spoken in like a four mile radius or something like that. And um, it's the Queens. Yeah, of, of <laughs> Chicago. Oh, sure. Yeah, actually, kind All of right. furthest north, furthest yeah. east. Well, Bronx is the furthest north. Yeah, oh, yeah but yeah, it's yeah. the but, most know, diverse. Yes, yes. They've got, I think, something like 180 languages right. spoken just in that. Yeah, it's wild. Right. Yeah. So uh, basically, we started Edgewater Castle out of the fact that the level of talent in the area is just so high, uh, mostly based on the fact that there are a ton of uh, immigrant refugee services or service organizations in Edgewater that have been around for a very long time to help bring communities from other countries in and acclimate and sort of become uh, part of American culture. And what, but why did you do this? Because starting soccer teams is crazy, right? You just Dumping all your, you're losing money. It's, it's, oh it's, man! It's yeah, but think about how dope it is to explain this on a Tinder date. You know <laughs> oh, what I mean? right. Oh, oh, oh! You work in an office? Well, let me tell you what I do. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That so sounds sudden, interesting. Yeah. Look, look at the hero. Over what here, what you made know? you want to make that kind of sacrifice? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, it is it is difficult. Um, a lot of teams these days start by just you know someone with money being like, I got some, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I do not have any. Um, so it was. Don't say that on the Tinder date. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. For real. You're paying for this, right? <laughs> Yeah, um, that part right there. So uh, ba- basically, uh, I got really interested in soccer kind of for the first time a couple of years ago. Uh, I'm, I'm a carpenter. I make furniture as a to make money. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I had an injury in my shop, and I was sort of bedridden for a winter. 
And over the course of that time, I just started watching games and like got more into it. And that spring, I was like delusional, and I was like, I'm gonna play, and I'm gonna like go learn how to play on the, and all these pickup games. And I'd go see people play, and I'd be like, A, no, I'm not. Yeah. B, Man, all these, these all these immigrants are crushing yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. You could have gone the other way. Like, we need to get these immigrants out of here, so I'm better at soccer. Yeah, but I'm glad no. you went this way. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, build a bigger table. Yeah, you know what I, I mean. Like that. So, That's a good way to go. But legit, I like went to to see players uh, and got to know some of the guys that were playing in the pickup games by the lake and. Um, um, the level of talent was just so high, and I'd start to ask people questions about where they play, what teams they play for. The majority of the best players I'd see said, I don't play on a team. Like, there isn't a team for me to play on. Like, I'm, I'm not in college. I'm not in high school. Yeah. So, so the basically, I started to investigate, like, how do you start a soccer team? Um, and what are the different avenues you can go down? And through my research, I just sort of, like, smushed all my favorite ideas into one kind of business model, which is that we're a, a not-for-profit organization that behaves with the intention to grow into a legitimate semi-professional club. Um, so, you know, the, the fact that we don't charge anybody to participate has just helped bring in the talent. Yeah, like, yeah. Like Gabe here. Um, people who have just, you know, are in the neighborhood and showing up to play and... and uh, doing really well so yeah. far. Yeah. So let's let's yeah, get let's to talk know to Gabe. some of the players yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. So we have two of two of me. Let's start with Gabe. Uh -huh. uh, Gabe, yeah. how how do you end up at Edgewater and what what position do you play? What do you what what's your uh, role? I originally play a center back but oh, okay we <laughs> <laughs> my coach here is, he's not really I really like him as a center back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he keeps asking me to Coach, play me forward, play yeah. me forward. I'm like, <laughs> stick to center back. This is the thing about every defender. They swear they're the ones yeah. who score the goal. Yeah. Yeah. This is, every center yeah. back is a forward that's is a frustrated forward. Yeah. I swear on that. So, Gabe, okay, where are you originally from? Oh, I'm originally from uh, Tanzania, so in East Africa. Okay. Yeah, so. Uh, how'd uh -huh. you end up in Chicago? Oh, I moved here because my dad been here for like approximately 20 years now so okay yeah i applied for like visa then i ended up here so with my family that's amazing yeah. and uh, let me ask weather wise yeah. just like tanzania correct the weather, the weather? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no you didn't have to buy a jacket i'm sure you had one already. Uh, I, when I, you got here what was your first you... winter like were you like why did people stay here? uh <laughs> yeah the first time i got here like because i came alone from like tanzania yeah. all the way here so my dad used to tell me it's cold because I came in mid-November. It Ooh. was on, yeah. Yeah. So when I got here, I got out of O'Hare. I got out of the exit. I was like, probably I'm not here. This is not like what I, <laughs> I expected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, because I didn't have I no mean, shoes on. I didn't have no jacket. Am so I in I, the wrong country? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah that's, she was just like those Jamaicans from the movie yeah, about cool the boxer. Yeah, 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 cool yeah, running. Yeah, 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 Something yeah. like that. You get off so the train, like, you're like, uh, did we land in northern Canada by mistake? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, was, did this say Chicago or Antarctica? I think I'm in the wrong yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was my first impression. I like, uh, probably I'm last. So I went back in, then I find out I was in the right place. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but my dad knew I was going to mess up for some reason, so he had jackets, couple jackets with him for like... Did you ask him like, Dad, Miami wasn't on the list here? <laughs> uh, you couldn't get to Houston? <laughs> no, I, I didn't ask her that question. I just knew I have Happy to, to be deal here. with this for a while. Right, yeah. So Gabe, what, what, does this, uh, what does this team mean to you? I know you getting here, and I know uh -huh. you must have played a tons of football, right, when yeah. uh, back in Tanzania. The fact that you have this opportunity just to play on a, an organized team when that that's not too it's not too easy in America just to yeah. find find a place to play soccer. What does it mean to you? Uh, this I mean I was coach the other coach James who is not here with us. He's the one who called me. It's like uh, we have a club going on, so you wanna come play? I was like, oh yeah, because I was now I, I usually just play like pickup games. Yeah, I yeah. don't really like play for a team. On summer 2016, I think, I made my own team and joined the league, but it was just like a regular league, which was like, would not end nowhere, like, as edge what I is. So I was, I was pretty impressed, so I got there, and I was like, yeah. I mean, when I, I got there at the middle of, uh, not at the beginning, it was like, yeah. Like yeah. In the summer... Early summer, I think, maybe. Yeah, it was like uh, early so summer. 2018? Yeah. Some, summer 2018? Yeah, yeah. something okay. like that. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I got there before we even started playing. Like, um, we even got an end season or, like, any league. So Yeah, yeah. Did you play a lot in Tanzania? Uh, I've 
I actually play a lot. I don't only remember when I started playing soccer. So I just know I play a lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I just been playing soccer like so. So it's important. I mean, this is one of the things that I think is important yeah. about what's happening with Edgewater, is assimilating to a country. And we're both first generation Americans. Yeah. So my mother came from Cuba. His family came from Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have friends around you that are the, from the same country, it's a little bit easier, but you still have to go out into America. Like, you have to leave that little pocket of friendship to go to work and stuff. And I just remember my mom explaining how difficult it was for her to assimilate a little bit. And those little bits of things that remind her okay. of home just help a little bit sort of settle you. And for Cubans, it's like a little Cuban coffee shop yeah. or friends and family that'll come over and make the same food you're used to. Was soccer that for you? Uh, pretty much, yeah, yeah. pretty much. Cause uh, when I got on the team, I was like, man, this this organization, I'm pretty impressed. So Were you like, I brought man, like some of these people suck. More friends of mine. <laughs> this is really helping me out here. Nah, <laughs> no, I mean, good. you don't look, you don't look, you don't look it that way. Cause that's like that's the whole point of the team. Like yeah. you bring like different talent together to make right. yeah, one. Yeah. yeah, so that's how it is. So that's dope. I brought like six seven friends of mine now we play in the same team and i'm still bringing friends so yeah that's, that's yeah that's it's great, it's great. I, yeah i'm just bringing people but that's up to coach who is going to pick for the game and yeah gonna, yeah <laughs> here's what you need to do you need to find a taller slower stronger friend to play center back so uh, you can be forward <laughs> if you want to exactly, be forward, that's not, not gonna happen he's still gonna <laughs> be a center back <laughs> Well, let's talk. Wojcik Petroski. Yeah. Uh, you're one of the coaches or you're the head coach? I'm the head coach. You're the head coach. Yes. I mean, how does it feel to have like this like United Nations team? Uh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's very good because you have players from different that grew up playing the game differently. So you can do stuff a little bit differently. But it's also a big challenge because everyone understands the game different. Yeah. And we have to play together. I, well, me, you know, let's say I'm a forward. I got to know what Gabriel is going to do. Right. And also vice versa. He needs to know what I'm going to do. But if you grew up playing the game different, I playing the, gif the yeah, game yeah. different. So it's up to me, unfortunately. <laughs> but I really enjoy the challenge, getting the guys playing together, you know. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, it's been that, great. What, what was uh, your uh, experience? Uh, you, you said you were from Poland. Yes. Okay. So. So how did how what's your story? How did you get here? How did you end up be becoming co a coach? Do you uh, play regularly? Is that been a, a, a huge part of your life? Like, or, or is coaching that passion that you that, that's what you want to end up doing, like uh, full time as a career somewhere? All right, uh, back in Poland, I did a lot of different sports. A lot. Okay. Of, I played soccer. I'm from a winter capital of Poland, which is called Zakopane, which we do only winter sports. A lot of winter sports: yeah, ski yeah. jumping, cross country, biathlon, all of this stuff. So I did a little bit of everything. When I came to the States, I really got into, I also played soccer back in Poland, but when I came here at, at the 16 years old, I s really got into running, okay. cross country, track. And that's what I did throughout my high school, okay? I also kept with soccer, just pick up games here and there. But then I got injured, okay? Oh, wow. So I couldn't really compete at running. So that's where I started playing a lot of pickups games, adult, he, adult soccer in, in the Chicago area, but I messed up my knee. So I was done. And a friend of mine said that there's a coaching. Uh, my, his dad has a club and he needs a coach. I'm like, I got to go and give it a shot. Yeah, yeah. And I started coaching and I've been doing it for eight years. And it's the best thing that I've ever done. Oh, that's amazing. So I'm here at the convention, learn, observe, you know, learn. There's so many different good coaches. So I'm trying to learn. And I got to the point when I was like, all right, coaching kids is unbelievable, you know. But if you want to go, you got to start coaching other guys. Yeah. And that's when I sent an email to Andrew that and then he invited me to one of the practices and then rest of history you know I, i've been coaching and i'm really enjoy working with the guys so that's great and that, that's a great story especially uh, being an immigrant being in this country and then coaching in itself is, is so much about communication i know you know i know when my mother her she doesn't have a strong grasp of english right so they're not i'm not, I'm not suggesting that you do not you have a great grasp of english uh, but, it could be better <laughs> but <laughs> no, you have a great but grasp. what but what was that like for you going in with that confidence of like i'm going to speak to other men and in, in a language that is not my first language and isn't their first and language, isn't their language. <laughs> but i'm going to communicate the game in a way like w w that, that that's the language we all have to speak football we have to speak yes. soccer right uh -huh. so how how was that were, were you self-conscious at all uh, about 
communicating your message the way you want you want, I you am wanted still self-conscious but okay. let me tell let me tell you a story <laughs> when I came here today uh, when I came into the United States, I could count up to 12 in English Not bad. and I knew three words Mo it's more than him Trust okay me. <laughs> my second Where, day when does 12 get there is that after <laughs> four or? I go into McDonald's my my second day in the States okay I go into McDonald's and I'm like I watch people what do I, how they order the food and they're like all right I got this I come up to a lady and I'm like number one please it's like, okay, and, sh and she asked me a question. What would you like to drink? And I'm looking at her like, uh, oh boy, I, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. That's how bad it was. This. You know? <laughs> and, then, like, yeah, uh, <laughs> and then she's like, Coke, Spy. Oh, okay, <laughs> now I get it. You know, yeah. so it was bad, but. And you also learned the word diarrhea the next day. <laughs> <laughs> right out of here. Maybe Probably. not the word, but certainly yeah. the meaning. <laughs> but yeah, the since that point, sure. that, that experience made me like, I got to learn the language as soon as possible. So throughout high school, I was like, learn 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 so yeah. i got involved with when i joined the cross country team i was the only polaco in there yeah. and it was all spanish guys so that's how i learned the language but i'm still self-conscious of my my language isn't <laughs> isn't i where i wanted it to be no you, <laughs> i feel like personally though you have a great soccer coach voice yeah like yeah. your accent to me yeah. really like helps me trust you yeah you know you sound like you should be telling me where to stand on the field yeah, of, exactly. of well soccer. thank you thank you yeah. so when it comes when it comes to coaching what is uh what are the coaches uh, a coaching style that you would kind of uh, uh connect yourself to and what what are there any coaches that yeah, are you more of a Mourinho or are you more of a Jurgen Klopp I when I started I was Mourinho get in the shape defend yeah. together the shape but the longer I'm involved in the game, I become more of Guardiola. Okay. So now I'm trying to transform, uh, you know, my coaching style. And even Gabriel, he knows that. At, at first we were like, defend, let's get in shape. Let's yeah. start with that. But now we slowly go to that place. Let's press the higher. Let's, yeah. let's win the Gabriel, ball. Gabriel, you better be good with both feet, Gabe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think uh, his coaching style is like... Um, depending on like how we develop as a team. Okay. Oh, so it's like winning or losing. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Yeah, he becomes winning real fast. <laughs> nah, losing, losing, losing is never an option. <laughs> there you go. That's never right. an option. He's a good so. coach if you're saying <laughs> yeah. that, right? Yeah, yeah. There you go. so yeah, his, his coaching style is depending on how we develop. So it's like, cause as of right now, we have like defending shape and attacking shape. So we use both of them depending on like the team too so and what's happening in the yeah, game what's happening all, yeah. in the game too and like what's the score so that's that's yeah. what pretty much yeah which I think is something that uh, Wojcik said which I think is really important so many people think that this, mm -hmm. this coaching convention is just the meetings of the millionaires and they let you just have a little boot so you're busy while they're over there deciding the future of US soccer but most people don't realize there's folks that are coming here and they're learning some really important things or, or d sort of refining some of the tactics they already know. Is there anything in, in particular, Vocek, that you thought you came here and that you could take away? Of course. Well, my, my ears and my eyes are so open. Yesterday I went to the Hall of Fame uh, panel. Yeah, yeah. When I saw Jerry, the godfather, Coach Jerry, the godfather from Uni uh, U University of Indiana, I was like, and all the the other uh, the panelists that were there, I was just sitting there like this. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, because they have they know so yes, much. Yes, and absorb as much as you possibly can. You know, session. There's coaches from Manchester United here, Liverpool, Chicago Fire. So. It, I'm I'm crazy. I cannot wait three, to come back three, tomorrow. Three three giant clubs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, everyone knows them as equals. Yeah. Uh, well, th th honestly, this, it, it's an incredible story. I mean, it just I I, I love uh, when we we met Andrew uh, last summer during the World Cup comedy tour. Uh, but this kind of, once we sort of heard it, 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 it's nice to be in front of you guys and hear those strong accents. Yeah. <laughs> but also, like, yeah, see how it's putting being put in practice yeah. as opposed to just this sort of idea of a team for people that are new in this country when you see it and yeah. you see how it how it helps you're like oh all yeah, right we did a good thing yeah it's a lot and it's yeah. a lot of hard work i know it's very just like i know it's hard for us just to talk about it I yeah imagine. just <laughs> listening to us must be terrible yeah. <laughs> no but it is it is uh inspiring you know I, we 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 haven't been doing this soccer podcast super long but, but when we meet people that are involved in the game uh, the way you are, and we know th the sacrifices that you have to make, you guys are not millionaires uh, putting, but you At know, least doing not yet, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. All, well, we're getting there. Yeah, oh, yeah, game says we're getting there. So, so, we how, all do, are. We so all how do people, uh, one, uh, go see you guys play? 
What, what's yeah. the best way to find you guys? So um, if you live in Chicago or, or the northwest suburbs, even better, we play in uh, the Europa Indoor League at Soccer City in Palatine through March every Sunday. So you can come see us there. We also have every game live streamed on our Facebook page okay. as of last week. So uh, if you tune into our Facebook page at Edgewater Castle for all our social media, yeah. you'll be able to find ways to watch us play. Um, and, uh, you know, another thing I want to say is that we're uh, a community ownership governed club. So basically, one of the main ways that we're able to sustain ourselves is through our community ownership group, which is basically people that have committed to be sort of in a small way administratively involved with the club and know what the goings on are and uh, contribute a small amount financially to be in that group and sure. have voting power and stuff like that. So our website has more information on that, which is uh, edgewatercastlefc.com. And then in the summer months, we're sort of figuring out what our home stadium is going to be at the moment, like as of today. But uh, you, you and NYCFC, buddy. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> we, we we should talk. We should like spitball <laughs> about yeah. like, what it's maybe, like to look for a, a stadium. stadium share program. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. In between. Are you guys interested in like park district facilities? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, They'll be but, like, we'll take any idea. <laughs> is it a baseball stadium? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, we're going to be playing uh, in the outdoor league in the spring and summer, and those games. Will all be live streamed too. Do, do you also have uh, like tryouts for any new players and things like that, or how do you find how do you find talent? Uh, well, it's a it's a it's a little bit of a mixed bag. I'll let Wojciech speak to that a little bit because yeah, I, yeah. I bring in you know when I find a player I really am excited about with my minimal knowledge, mm -hmm. I get you know I occasionally bring them into practice and coach is like, who is this? What are they doing <laughs> yeah, in my no, practice? Why, why are you here? Um, <laughs> but no, we we have sort of a, a rolling situation where we have a really big strong first team now. Um, but we're, you know, willing to, to bring new people in to see how they fit. And um, sure. we have a, a reserve team that is being built up, too. So if people want to come and uh, get in touch with us, they can email me at edgewatercastlefc at gmail.com. Um, and, yeah, we're always, we're always interested in talking to people that are at very least interested in the game and at best want to contribute to help us do what we're doing. And, so. hey, we're in a city where a large number of fans were banned from going to see the professional, the top player. It's true. Why not pick up the Edgewater hey, scarf? Huh? We are. We do not have a section to close. There you go. <laughs> so right, we're, we're, I'm we're sure your you guys. would love uh, Sector oh, yeah. Latino for a team of immigrants. Come on, my guys. That'd be nice. Oh yeah, we're what down at Edgewater. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, Andrew, Gabe, Wojciech, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank man. you for having us. It was a blast. And go, uh, go Edgewater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go Rooks. Go Rooks. Go Rooks. Go rooks. Go Come rooks. on, you Rooks. Go Rooks. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thank you, guys. What's up? It's the world champion, Judah Friedlander, and you're watching the Cooligans. Why? Because you're cool. This is what winners look like right here, man. I mean, you're looking at us. Right now with my legs, I just juggled the ball 80,000 times. <laughs> you missed it. Yeah. He's been playing keepy-uppy since I met him. Yep, look faster, guys. <laughs> Go Team USA. <laughs>